You are still watching this morning on ITV. It's time now for our discussion segment. Here we'll be looking at the ease of doing business, how it impacts the economy. You know, that most economies of the world, they deliberately provide or create an enabling environment for business to thrive in terms of registration, in terms of uh, your business name, in terms of your product and how you go about it. They do that so as to encourage both direct foreign investors as well as the uh, local investors. Mm -hmm. Now, to do this, I have with me Chimene Paul. He's a business analyst. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, we're just discussing behind the camera how this thing uh, works, but let's get it now for the benefit of our viewers. Tell us about uh, ease of doing business. All right, thanks for having me once again, and um, thanks, viewers. I think the ease of being doing business um, by the government is just a um, government program, you know, to ensure that those bottlenecks that hinders fast business growth are removed. Um, it is said that in the past, uh, Nigeria is one of the most difficult country to do business. Um, you want to register a business, it takes you months, you want to get your tax, you know, and all that. So um, various governments, especially with this current government, and um, introduced this this policy, um, probably because of the ranking of World Bank, because uh, these are also post part of the programs that World Bank used to measure, uh, World Bank used to you know, come up with reports of nations that you can easily go to do business. So for Nigeria, uh, before now, I think Nigeria was um, ranking um, about 131, you know, out of 150 or there about of 159 nations, you know, in the ease of doing business. But when this government came and introduced that policy where within hours, you know, you can have your company registered, um, within hours, you can have your tax, you know, within hours, your, your container is, is it's cleared. Uh, it's cleared within hours or days or you know um, you can go to navda can have your certification for your product and others so, so so that the people can easily um, bring in their products of course and then their products enters market instead of um, you don't have a license or you don't have certificates to bring in your products and others so this pro program you know and um this, this this program government introduced and as at last time I, I still check the world bank rank, ranking i think they have also seen that with this policy nigeria is now a safer place or a quicker place to do business yeah but why we appreciate government for for that it's really still on the cumbersome side when you must go through the operators you know at the cac talk about the accountant as well as the lawyers for you to have your company registered okay because um, I think um, that was before but with this new policy uh, it's not just lawyers or the operators as we say mm. that um, can go to either CAC or um, FRS you know yeah to do their tax papers by accountant or another mm. it's your level of interest and how knowledgeable you are of course you know that probably because they have an act and those who interpret laws you know are lawyers and that's why cac is like you are coming with a lawyer because the lawyers have to draft you know the um, memorandum of understanding and then all the terms interpret that but for this program under the ease of doing business i think most of those bottlenecks have been removed um, business registration, especially for just a business name, can even through your phone. If you, you, you are in your office, you quickly just do other search. It's no longer I must go through lawyers. People uh, can just do it in the comfort of their homes. And you can say, um, even um, the current um, chairman of um, F uh, no, CAC Corporate Affairs Commission um, is now saying, no, we no longer give you certificate by hand you know everything has to do online is soft copy so when you register they wouldn't know who is a lawyer and who is not a lawyer As business offices are just opening and then registering uh, companies instantly 
So then for FRIS again, it is not necessarily. I've seen people who just walk to FRIS office, get the details. But when it comes to um, putting the company, what's going on, statement of account or statement of affairs and others, of course, you know that an ordinary person who is not an accountant, not just chartered, you know, mm -hmm. any accountant. That's what, that's what you do. Uh, yes, you to can just so on, you know, on, on annual basis. Yes, so and. So there are things, is your level of information. The, the truth is that uh, most business people are not willing to do this. And everybody wants, uh, like we said, it's ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Why stress myself to go to CAC when I have a lawyer I can just give money to do that? Why stress myself to go to FRIS, you know, when I can, when I can just give? So everybody wants that um, easy way of doing things. But if you painstakingly go to CAC, get most of this information, go to FRIS office, you know, you get this information. So you discover that there are a lot of things you can just do for yourself. I've seen, I've met people who say, no, I need to pay this person. To. I say, no, you don't need to pay um, annual returns. You know, go to FRIS, especially um, somebody have just billed you, uh, you have to pay this amount. I said, why do you have to pay the person? Because that's what the, the person, person said. 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 As, and I said, no, it is not supposed to be so. Um, and I tried to educate the person. For instance, um, if every month you don't do any business and you go to FRS and file your VAT, uh, this thing, you just go there, they'll give you a form. And you put, no, 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 no. You don't do, pay government anything because you didn't do anything. Um, if you do a job which will be paid and deducted as source, you just write on that paper, deducted as source, and then you submit it. At the end of the year, what they will just do is to issue you your certificates, you know. But a lot of people just sit down and then one man takes their, you know, lack of information on their ignorance and be or laziness. Ex or laziness. So, so every year he comes and says, oh, no, because uh, my tax, uh, my VAT papers, you know, they are charging me VAT. VAT, did you do any business? No, if you didn't do any business. Now, it is a um, penalty on your part if you don't submit. That's what government will charge you. So government will charge you. So as long as you go to FRIS office every month, you know, before 21st of the following month. And you just get the paper, you feel for the previous month that you didn't do anything. Nobody is going to charge you anything. So people just need to know how this thing works. It's not a, it's not a difficult okay, system. Okay, why, why we, again, say it's a good thing that we have this policy on ground, creating this en enabling environment. Uh, what can we do to ensure that the aim is achieved? You know, in times uh, like this, many persons won't take advantage of it. You understand? And be, like you were just talking about lawyers now or accountant will tell you, this is what I must do, this is what yeah. you must pay. But it may not really be true until you go yourself. So what can be done to monitor this process so as to ensure that those who are registering businesses are the ones that really want to do business? Well, uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge is very, very powerful. What can be done? I think um, in, my, in my, my little experience, you know, uh, all over the world, um, both the government and the citizens have parts to play. Now, in, in terms of um, in Nigeria, I also just discovered that um, information are not really or properly passed, you know, to the citizens. And um, the citizens are also not ready to go extra mile in getting this knowledge. But again, you also know that um, for government establishments like um, CAC and FRS, I think through television programs, so they also set up a department in, in either FRS or CAC that comes weekly you know, to let people know. But again, how many people want to sit down and just listen to FRIS is educating the people how to come and file in and do their tax without stress. Um, um, CAC, you know, is doing that. Customs, every government agency is trying to educate the, the, the people. But how willing are the people trying to do? So it is um, a two-way thing. I am interested because I'm doing business. I should be able to listen to what the government is saying. They passed phones, they sent SMS, and all this. And so on the government part, they are trying to bring that awareness. Now it is now for the, the citizens, 
you know, to now embrace these policies and then we'll go extra mile. Where things are not clear, these offices are open. Go and ask questions. Nobody is charging you for asking questions. Mm -hmm. So just go and ask questions so that you will be able to know how this is. So next time when somebody comes to you, I'll, I'll tell you one experience in those days. Um, when I first came to Abuja, that's like talking about 10 years now. And um, somebody introduced me to a friend. It's not my business. Of course, that was where I was working. So I committed about 250,000 naira to that young man, you know, to help us renew the company documents. The date, the now is like 10 years. He didn't do that. He ate the money. So I have to struggle to. So after about five years, I, I still saw him at FRIS, you know. And so God, so you, yes, and I, I, we got him arrested. He signed, you know, some undertaking before the police and everybody. But you know, up to, he just absconded again after that. The police there couldn't do anything. Now that gave me a lesson that I said, well, I don't need to go through any third party. And, and if I have any business to do, I just walk up to them. They give me information. The one I cannot do, I, I sit down in your office, you know, if it is um, putting the documents, um, company statements and all that, you, you just tell me what to do. You do it and I pick it and go and file. Filing, I know how to do that. I can do that. So if I'm not doing, if I decide to go into full-time business persons, I don't think I need these people because I have acquired that knowledge that they have. So all it will take, you know, in terms of monitoring. Of course, you know that policies is not our problem in Nigeria. Mm, it is in the implementation. So mm -hmm. uh, it is how to implement this thing. So, so, so in all of this, to what extent do you think the economy will be reflected? I mean, to what extent uh, will, will it grow the economy? So as we speak, the several millions of youth are still in the labor market. Uh, if we have those that have come up with uh, some... Uh, capital and are willing to do business. They can't do it alone. You need labor. That means one or two, uh, you know, companies should be taking two or more from out of the, the labor market. So, to what extent will that, you know, reflect the economy? All right, um, economy. Uh, for me, I think is um, is not a one-way traffic thing. Mm -hmm. Is is a two-way thing, mm -hmm. um, and they all go in chains. Mm -hmm. Now. If we, if everybody who is a business person, you know, has his company registered, okay, it means that government have a database of the number of companies operating in one business or the other in Nigeria. Now, if everybody who is doing business, you know, goes to pay tax, you know, now you are more generating money more money for government. Mm. Now, why I say is a two-way thing. The government not being able to governize this. The government is losing money. Why go to lose money where you can get money? And because government is not getting enough money, all of us want a developed economy. We want infrastructure. Government go out to borrow. And when they borrow, they now bring the interest. So it is what everybody to do. Government should step up the games and look at how you know we can bring in these resources that are just wasting somewhere and put it into the economy that will help to create job isn't it it is when government um gets money you know to construct road then people will be employed government gets money to go into housing scheme people will be employed now we have said that it is not just the duty of government to create job and that's part of what the ease of doing business and the neighboring environment that the government thinks they are just creating. So the blame on the go part of government is that government should step up their games. In you know, if you must get people to do, if uh, you can't run ar uh, around everybody, how many staff does FRS have? You know to go to cover um, country as big as Nigeria. It is not possible. Now, what they are doing with media should be stepped up. Let people more awareness. Don't just do it like, uh, we we'll just do this on a, a, whether they go and, I, one thing I discover in Nigeria that um, a lot of government um, agencies, mm. you know, are on the defaulting part. They are just happy that people default. I, I don't want to just call it because we are on the public media. Mm -hmm. You know, those enforce, law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. 
you know, if you are going now, you see most of them are sitting down, only waiting for who either big traffic or who just and all that. Mm -hmm. It is yeah, not like it be fought. Be traffic. No, no. They are, they, <laughs> of course, um, if if the road, mm. most of the traffic lights are not working mm. or are not well set, so you should also know that. And then somebody is supposed to stand to control traffic, and he's sitting down. Everybody just pushing himself. Mm. Now they are just waiting. Those simple things that you can correct people mm. is not a correctional. Thank God for the prison that have just changed to correctional mm. center. Mm. Not. Okay, sir. In helping the economy, mm. it is when you do step A mm. that step B will work well. So if you are a business person, mm. well, sincerity of purpose. If you on your own can go and volunteer and say that I'm doing this, I think you are helping the government. But again, it is the responsibility of the government to step up and see how you can get every database of those who are doing this business. Yeah, so while the database is important, what about uh, some kind of soft loans to these uh, business outfits that really want to you know, create jobs if their business booms? There are many of them that just want as little as 500,000, 200,000, and to put into their business so as uh, to grow it. And there's so much challenge in getting that. All right. Um, it's the same database. I, for me to, yes, you know, let me tell you why is having the database. Now, if your business is not registered, I, I did one. No, I'm talking about those that are, those are registered, registered now. Okay, fine. It but those registered, that are, yes, they have a policy. You know, you know the idea mm -hmm. of you know, going into business to create some kind of services or goods, whatever, you know, most time when it is conceived, you are told quickly go and register it before another person, you know, register that kind of business with that business name you have. So you see people just go into it first, they have the business name, it is registered. The next thing will be, okay, I need a land or an a, well, a space, an office space, and after that, I need to buy these goods. I need to convert the goods into another. You, 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 you get what, what I'm saying? So, from the point of getting a space and getting the money to buy raw material for conversion into what you want, there is always a challenge, financial mm -hmm. challenge. What can be done? That's what I'm trying to say. Now, to government say have um, not speaking for government. But we have to correct the, uh, let's say it the way it is. Um, I know that uh, not just this government, all government in Nigeria, since I, you know, came up to say I'm a man and I'm following government programs, um, government, you know, have one initiative or one program for uh, SMEs or supporting businesses in Nigeria. Um, a clear example was now say from Obasanjo time. Mm. Obasanjo created SMEDA, Small Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria. Now these people will help you know put the small business. One thing is that a lot of Nigerians are not taking advantage of this. You just hear and uh, what are they doing? That lack of interest is also you know a hindrance to where some people can easily sell in their business. Now if you go to SMEDA, you know let me tell you one thing about SMEDA. Even if you don't know, you are just conceiving an idea. An idea can come in a very broad way. Smidian first have this business clinic. They can help you shaping the your the business idea that you have. Now, because you are going to ask for a loan, nobody will just come and say, ah, I have this idea if it is not well shaping. So Smidian helps you to shape in, you know, your business concept. Smidan helps you to develop. They can help you put up a business concept that can be bankable. And then you go to the bank and other. Smidan also, you know, have um, some financial institutions they can link you. That's, they won't give you, they are not guaranteeing you. But if you try, based on the gov uh, what we have seen, because it is this responsibility of Smidan by government to ensure that they bring up these small businesses. So how many of these young people, you know, have this information to go to Smedan. You can just go there and look, I have this kind of business. I want to see how I can develop it. And people will put you through. Now, that's on Smedan part. Um, under CBN, you know, we, the next administration came, you know, talking about the Yaradu and Jonathan. Jonathan administration 
came and said, okay, it is government can create job and they introduce the UN. And I can tell you, following that program, before the administration left, I think they've empowered over 4,000 young people. Which, which huge amount, we are talking of 500,000, but these are government programs that are giving them millions. All right, so then, now in this present government now, you are seeing the, the different um, trader money and all that. Government will tell you they are doing. It is just you always being anxious to get those things done. Nobody will get it for you. Now, I cannot say that government is not giving. You know, what we now say is, are they giving to the right people or what channel are they using to do this? Let people know uh, because we, we have a lot of limitations in Nigeria. Now, now by the time we are here, a lot of persons don't even have uh, power to watch what we are doing. So if government gives, so government should, you know, create more avenues where information can get to the right people at the right time. Somebody who was talking to me just last week and said, oh, there's this agency of government that are doing recruitment, you know, so they have published names of those that have scaled through and now they're supposed to be an exam. Mm. Because there was no information again, mm. I don't know the means with which they also released the timetable for the exam. So some persons missed out. Now, how do you now say this person did not make or will you blame the person or you blame the government? No, but there but must but be a synergy. You have, you, you have said that you, you are not, you are not uh, going to, to speak for the federal government or rather not the mouthpiece for SMEDA. The way you just described it, is it as easy as it seems? Because I have worked with SMEDA. I, 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 before I organized a program called, yeah, uh, it, I have done, it, uh, sorry, I have done breakfast meeting for young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and um, SMEDA were there as partners, technical partners, gave us resource persons mm. and a lot of because people. there are many persons that have been knocking at the gate of smidan for this kind of direction and of course support but till date they never got um i i i'm not speaking for them this is my experience this is what i've shared yeah but other people say that smidan is man no man no 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 smidan is not man. why would it be man no man because they are not even giving you money mm. what they do is to help you package your Product yeah, yeah. now, at, at now it's not it's not it's package. They can also influence some financial institution to, to yeah because to, to they have some partnership. They, they yeah, have partnership. That's, they that's have partnership. It's man no man. No, um, it can't be a man no man. It, it can't be a man no man. I speak for them because I have worked with them. Mm. Now I'm not in the, in the time past. In, in the time past, even uh, uh, now, even currently, uh, currently, you know, we we also have launched out a program called Nigeria Market. Nigeria Market is a program that we are using to spotlights you know, indigenous companies, mm. and we are promoting Nigerian brand. Mm. There's nothing you speak on or you just talk anything on Nigerian market that is not Nigerian based. Mm. All right. Now, because of this, I will have to work with a lot of government agencies. Mm. Let me tell you the truth. You know, so, 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 so who are those eligible to bring their product into the Nigerian market? The people are eligible to bring their products into Nigeria. Yes, if you are, if you have any products that has a Nigerian base, mm. you know, yes, so but, that we can. Are uh, Nigerians aware of this? <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, what's going on? We are on uh, it. On, we are on it. Uh, that, that's the, we are on it. The flip side. No, we are on it. Uh, that program was just last year mm. during the COVID period, and of course, these are a lot of things we need to just talk. COVID came. A lot of persons were crying and waiting for. You know interventions and all that some other people were also thinking mm. you know when covid came we we're talking about the economic and all that mm. when covid came it it hits the economy mm. but you also know that covid also created job for some persons very few no yes it, very few no listen now no, those who came up those those who came no. up with uh face masks the local face masks how many percent no 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 it, that one is not yeah. just yeah already existing Pharmaceuticals. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, the first I'm going to talk the about those supplied pallet, the, the, the first, uh, the local rice and beans and uh, you know. So no. okay, so yes, the rice, the rice were not uh, yeah. foreign. The yeah. rice were yeah. local. We know the beans yes. were local. True. All right. So, but how many of them uh, supplied? No, that's uh, of course uh, the population of one mil, uh, 200 million, You know, it is now no. It is money. it is those who and, want to and, do and those items were not shared. 
Uh, well, th that's, that's the aspect of... <laughs> no, I, I've said, everything <laughs> now is... Uh, we have to look at the two ways. Yes. Okay, now, to this aspect, what do you do? Do your own part. Hmm. Now, let's not digress. Sorry that we hmm. came up now. No, the no, aspect no, we're, of... We're not digressing. Okay. But whatever the policy is, it has a target. And if the target is not achieved, what is the, the essence? Yeah, just agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. But the target to... You see one thing about um, government policies. Of course, government... How many people are in government? How many people are in this government? The, a lot of us have relied so much on um, maybe, you say, 1,000 persons. From the office of the president to the vice president to the ministers and all that. Maybe like 1,000. Then you think that this 1,000 will man the problem of um, 200 million people and they get it correctly. Now, it is the, the, the citizens, you know, talking about media. Media, I think we have given... We have civil society groups. You know, we have other NGOs. We have CBOs and all that. Can all of us as citizens, I tell people every, every time I'm, I have the privilege of talking to people, I said, in other developed countries, you know, it is the citizens that hold government accountable. And you also agree with me. When the answers uh, 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 thing came, did government do something to it? Yes. He said, we don't want uh, um, SAS. Do we have SAS again? That name SAS is erased. Because the citizens took the power to the government. But the, the main idea was to end police brutality. Yeah. Mm. And um, is it as it was before? How is it now? No, because anybody who is doing that has to be cautious. Mm. Before, a policeman can just walk up and do whatever he feels like he's doing. Somebody has said to my, he, now this is face to face. Eh, I'll shoot you and then, you know, throw away my, my uniform. And that is the end of it. Yes, that's the end of it. But today, you know, it cannot be as in those days that you are just walking, maybe because you are driving a good car as a young person and the policeman sees you, he feels that you are a Yahoo person. And there's a level of caution. And of course, that was just the first one. Let me tell you, if in different, you know, ways that a lot of citizens can come, this is what we want. In 2012, they talked about this uh, uh, oil subsidy removal. The citizens said, no, we don't want it. Isn't it? Government reversed it. So it is the citizens. The government citizens, uh, no, not government. Nigerian citizens have to really hold government accountable. Mm. Now, a lot of things are going, and people are not speaking. If you are not talking, the government feels, yes, we are doing the right thing. So you keep speaking. Just keep okay, talking. just keep speaking, keep talking, keep demanding for what is right. Exactly, what, what is, is right. No, what is right, of for course. what is wrong. Of course, the law yeah, is also yeah, there to you, discipline you. You'll be, you be there so, <laughs> you be there so before we go, what's your final word on this? Uh, for those that may want to register one business or the other, and of course for the government that is uh, giving this opportunity for people to register their uh, businesses, the, this you know, well enabling em environment, the kind of every environment they should create to also support those that have successfully registered their business. Let's get that, you know, as a final word. All right. Thank you. Um, what we need to do or what people need to do, those who want to register, you know, the Internet is there. A lot of people carry smartphones these days and then just to chat. Every information. I think there are most of these government informations, you now you have made me to, like, be a spokesperson for government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, mm -hmm. uh, but the truth is that mm -hmm. uh, most of these government um, platforms, with your phone, you can just do that. You can just do that. So let people be, you know, knowledge hungry. You just be hungry for knowledge. You, you can't go into a business environment that you are not used to. It's not like the days of Erified when he said he was an accidental uh, public servant or civil servant. Let's not do business as a, an accidental thing. You know, be, get a literal foundation about whatever you're just going to do. So let people be hungry for knowledge. Let people just keep asking questions. In Nigeria, we must keep asking questions in question so that because as you ask you get to get you uh, know the answer so let people just keep asking and then for government um let the little policies of government that are there for the people 
really go to the right people. And what you say, if you go, they will ask, what, who are the right people? The Nigerian citizens are the right people. Okay. So, the government should also increase, you know, their own effort in reaching out. CBN shouldn't just announce an intervention through maybe when there's bankers committee or when there's a one for uh, then you just announce and that is the end of it. Nobody hears. Everybody is now uh, interpreting it in, in its own way and all that. And you, so government will also improve in information dissemination. They have channels. They have the national orientation agencies. They have other channels of government that can also pass this information so because if you don't give the people the right information you know they tend to form the information themselves and they misunderstand the government policies there are a lot of programs i tell you that will benefit the people but because government is not coming out in clear terms let the people hear so it, it is english the way you understand it you just take it up that way. so let everybody be on the desk thank and you so very much uh, mr Chimene Samuel, a uh, business analyst, uh, the much we have on this discussion segment. And uh, we will thank you for, for, for coming. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank we, you so we much. hope uh, to bring you back soon. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm always a friend of the house. So anytime, I think it's about Nigeria. Anything that has to do with improving Nigeria, I, don't beg me. I'm willing to volunteer to, to, myself. To talk yes. about it. All yes. right. Okay, we'll take a quick break. When we'll come back, the program continues.